everyone, it's Nadia, Jake, and this is my cousin Chris who's going to review with us today because he watched the film. We also have Babu with us today, Sedona and Buddy. Um, we're going to review The Marvels. The Marvels, which is getting uh, notoriety because it is biggest box office bomb in the history yeah. of Marvel. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's... we're gonna go talk about the non-spoiler first and then we'll talk about the spoilers after. And I must say like, when I first watched the film, I had really low expectation because you told me it was bombing really bad. Right. And we just watched it earlier this week. Well, it's also getting bad reviews too. Well, I haven't watched, I don't really watch reviews before um, I give mine, but um, I was actually surprised that it was bombing as badly as it did because I didn't think it was as bad as some of the other Marvel films. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that because I actually enjoyed the movie because yeah. I didn't really look at the reviews before watching the movie and like just watching the movie, it was really fun. <laughs> I would probably rate it like five out of 10. I mean, I don't think it was like, I was still, I don't, I didn't think it was great, but I thought it was like, I didn't think it should be bombing. Wait, five out of 10? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna surprise everyone by saying, I thought it was pretty good. Really? I'd give it like a seven. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, but that might be uh, a mixture of just having low expectations going in. I honestly think it's just like a PR nightmare right now because you have a lot of forces coalescing to be against Marvel. Like they're having their worst PR crisis probably ever mm -hmm. because a lot of stuff is coming out. Like that new Marvel book that's been like revealing a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, recent box office bombs. And it just felt like this was something that was destined to not make that much money. Like they're making a sequel supposedly to Captain Marvel, which made like a billion dollars. Like that was a huge success. So it's kind of crazy that the sequel to that is doing so poorly, but I think having it be sort of a sequel to a show Miss Marvel that no one really watched on Disney Plus and having uh, uh, Captain Rambo who was in WandaVision. So I think it just kind of became the essence of like, okay, the last few Marvel movies haven't been that good. And then we have all this homework we have to do. It doesn't seem like a major thing is going to be happening in this one. So maybe we just need to sit home. And I think more and more people are just kind of going like, I'll play it by ear to see if I really need to see this one. I think it's a combination of Marvel burnout or just superhero movie burnout because we've had so many of them. It's kind of like we're desensitized to it. I certainly feel like I am because I'm not as excited as I used to be when these movies first started coming out. I also think after Endgame and the superheroes we knew in those movies, they left. It's been kind of hard to get the audience to root for the new heroes on top of the burnout. So I think like... I think it's part of that. I think this movie has like a mixture of different audience type and I could see the logic and they were trying to bring those different audiences together, mm -hmm. hopefully for better views and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't really that excited about Miss Marvel because I like didn't really see that. Did either of you see Miss Marvel? I did not, but seeing her in this movie, uh, she really brought in that energy that, you know, uh, when, uh, Peter Parker was first introduced. Yeah. Oh, yeah Spider Man. Yeah, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that, that teenage mm -hmm. uh, Gen Z energy, I guess, like uh, referencing like pop culture and all that. It was fun actually seeing her in the movie. I think that she pro did really well. Um, yeah. She was Miss Marvel, and then we have Captain Marvel, who is the older, one of the first Avengers, I think, after Captain America. And then we have a third main character who's not really, doesn't have a superhero name yet, Monica. And we can talk about her more in the spoiler mm -hmm. section. But yeah. I also think that the lack of the third superhero name for Monica also kind of did it disservice because it doesn't really brand her really mm -hmm. well, like going into other films, I'm going to be like, that's, oh, that's Monica. She's not really like, oh, okay. She doesn't like, stand out much. No, she doesn't stand yeah. out very much. I think that it's interesting because Marvel is very self-conscious about this film because I do think they were like, I, I think it was probably longer to begin with because this was a really tight, like 90 minutes, which par which is part of why I liked it because usually some of these Marvel movies are two and a half hours. I mean, look at the Eternals, you know? And I just, having something that's like short, sweet, not much there, I was like, Great, you know, it felt like 2010's mm -hmm. superhero movie, which like we've moved past that, but also it's like not the worst thing. It reminded me of like Blue Beetle, which I thought Blue Beetle was actually kind of worse than this. You know, this one had some like creativity stuff with like the body swapping or 
position swapping and everything. But it felt like they were very self-conscious about like, okay, people are saying that they need to do homework to see our movies. So let's make sure they know everything that's going on with all of these characters. So like you had Miss Marvel, you had like the little drawing flashback. And then for mm -hmm. Captain Marvel, you had like her little dream flashback. So there was a lot, like I never felt confused. Like I felt like, okay, I get what's going on. I didn't see Captain Marvel. I didn't see Miss Marvel, you know. I, so it, it felt like very cool. You don't really know who Monica is. So like. No, no. Yeah. I, I, I really like that. I also thought this movie had one of the most creativity in terms of like, I don't think this is spoiler, but there's some musicals in there. Um, There's some funny scenes in there. And I think that Miss Marvel's character really did bring a lot of humor into it, which probably wasn't as present. I mean, I saw um, Captain Marvel when it first came out and I didn't think there was much humor in there and it was pretty dry for me. I actually mm -hmm. didn't like it. I barely remember it because that's how I thought of the movie. It was really not that great. Mm -hmm. I What I remember was that like Captain Marvel's superpower was really above average and I really liked that. They've given her the most boring personality, I have but to she, say. They like, have, exactly. So, so, like, so, so like Miss Marvel's character kind of like, helped you oh she's know. the best part of the movie yeah yeah and it really yeah, helped them so. and it actually like brought out like um captain marvel a little bit more yeah and i think that was really great i just i honestly think that if it wasn't for marvel burnout promotion maybe like the sag after a strike i also i think i think it would have gotten more views i just think that it was kind of like unlucky time it for is, them yeah. and i honestly don't know why they didn't wait to i would have just pushed the movie a little bit more so they could have promoted it because i didn't see any promotion the reason i knew that that film was happening is because at our local theater there's like a poster for it do you guys think this would have been a more successful project if they had done like a series on Disney Plus with these characters because they aren't really huge no. characters. I mean, um, honestly, I think like yeah. a lot of the series in Disney Plus, they are like they overdid a lot of the series in Disney Plus. Yeah. So I think it would have also been like a little desensitizing experience in there. I think movie was good. I just think it was released at the wrong time. Yeah. I think there could have been more promotion and I think it's a marketing problem. Well, did you know this that Marvel's putting out just one movie? next year wow <laughs> yeah that, they're they're just like we're slowing down you know what I, the movie is what is it I don't deadpool know. oh deadpool. okay deadpool yeah. oh yes i've been I so heard about that oh wait these yeah. marvel <laughs> yeah isn't it deadpool with like um wolverine yeah, or something yeah. mm -hmm. i thought samuel L. jackson was great in this i know like secret invasion got a lot of criticism as being really dour and not very good and it seemed like he was having more fun now in this role you know what's funny the goofy stuff kind of reminded me of thor ragnarok yeah, yeah a little bit and i, I like that aspect of it because it was kind of like not taking itself seriously but it wasn't so far into like insane world as Thor Love and Thunder which I thought yeah. I think Thor Love and Thunder was a worse movie than this I don't know if it's just expectations I, I think so too this was at yeah. least like coherent like it had sort of yeah. a coherent story the tones it worked the tone worked I think it so. worked and also the action that was involved with all the characters I thought it was well choreographed mm. um, the fight scenes I really enjoyed those yeah, yeah the fight scene like in the house that was good that was good and just like the whole dynamic of them working as a team you know like them figuring their powers out and like mm -hmm. that was really fun right. wait did you guys watch uh secret invasion by the way i i think we watched a little bit but we we, we started watching like the first episode and we thought it was boring yeah but uh, just the first episode gives you a little bit of background um, of Nick Fury and what's happening because there are some of the characters that was in um, the first episode of Secret Invasion in this movie as well. So mm, Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's talk spoilers then. All right. All three, right. Two, three, two, one. one. Spoilers. For the Marvels. So I loved the cat scene. That was funny. Yeah. yeah that was it was really, really funny. Yeah. I thought uh, the cat, I don't know. I think honestly, when I think about the cat scene, I could rate it seven as well because it, it thought, I found it so hilarious. Like in the beginning, how Miss Marvel is holding a cat that's like swallowing all those people. And then later on, because to escape the ship, they end up like being eaten. 
it felt like a James Gunn thing. And I feel like people, if they had seen that scene out of context, they would be like, oh, it's like Guardians of the Galaxy scene. Mm, you're <laughs> and, right, yeah. But if they know it's in the Marvels, they're like, oh, that movie was crap. Like, I do think the reaction is a bit over the top. Like, I just feel like everyone's wanting to hate on this movie. I'm not yeah. saying it's perfect. It has issues. It has yeah. a weak villain, you know. There's not, you know, it's not a super serious, intense movie. But... It was fine. Like, it's it's better than a lot of other Marvel movies. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. It was much better than some other movies that have gotten out recently. But I guess there is some bias as well comparing it, this movie to past movies like Endgame or something else. Like, you cannot have, like, something like Endgame and then just compare all the movies to no, that. No, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I guess as a standalone, if you just, like, go to the theaters and watch that movie, I think you'd enjoy it, which I personally did. Mm -hmm. Like you said, there was a weaker villain. I, I hope that they would have done a bit more. But I guess it's just a classic Marvel villain that's just, like, a one-movie thing. Pretty much. And then yeah. they're gone. <laughs> It wasn't so much about the villain as just like they have an obstacle. It's well, I think the reason too. why is they're setting up Kang Dynasty. So they don't want to have like overpowered villain. That's like because all these movies are going to come together, you know, Supposedly. eventually. Except for the so, ones that don't work. Yeah, least. exactly. I don't for know how, don't how many more Eternals we're going to see. <laughs> I, yeah, so like, I just think that they're, they can't have a villain that's too powerful because of, I don't know if they're going to do King Dynasty still, to be honest, if you've seen Loki, you're going to kind of know why I say that also. Jonathan Majors. Yes, he's having a lot of legal problems, so Ooh. he might just be opted out, so I'm not really sure. Either way, I know that with the multiverse, there's going to be some, <laughs> there's, <laughs> There's going to be some uh, something where a big villain is going to be there and everyone has to gather together, I think, because just like Endgame. Um, yeah, I'm sure uh, that's eventually going to have happen down the road. Like you said, the villain wasn't too powerful and maybe they're putting up a p more powerful villain for like later movies. But uh, what I was trying to say is like a villain can still have a story or like a reason, although they did specify like her planet was dying and all that. But... Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was I, Captain Marvel's fault. I, I, I guess uh, if you can uh, understand like where the villain, the reasons behind the villains or like a little bit understand what the reason behind what they're doing, it would make a villain, make the villain a little bit better as a character, mm -hmm. uh, which this movie, I believe it lacked. That's yeah. so funny because I disagree with that. I actually think it, it it really showed why and explained why she was doing the things she did. Captain Marvel came to her planet, deprived them of things that actually makes their planet work. You know, so now they're living in the darkness. They don't have water. They don't have the proper air to breathe and basically she there was no apology there was no need to redo the past or correct her mistakes in any way at all the villain in the story she witnessed all of that you know the arrogance of everything so it makes sense and she is a villain because she's depriving other planets a similar way in which captain marvel did it but she saw her people suffer they're living in a planet that's basically uninhabitable in many ways um yet they have to like be living there she had a lot of reasons to do what she did but i thought her ending was pretty weak like i thought that the way she just like puts the bangles and like snaps it and then she just dies i thought it was like very weak ending for her <laughs> at that point i was just kind of like all right let's wrap it up wrap like, it up yeah you yeah. guys gotta figure it out mm -hmm. and then yeah. uh, when there was like the tear in the other universe. I was like, okay, someone's gonna be on the other side. And it, well, when she was like, I gotta, he I gotta <laughs> save it. And then I'm like, okay, but somehow you're gonna be on the other side of it accidentally. Kind of like building a brick yeah, wall, but like, oh, yeah. I'm trapped inside, you know? Well, I, it's, I remember telling you in theater, I was like, it's gonna be her mom that she's gonna see. Oh, and then literally right after that, she goes, Mom? <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> like was really second. funny. Um, I also thought it was funny that, or interesting, and I'm actually excited to see um, if there's going to be a follow-up, which I hope there is, is that the X-Men um, are yeah, in the parallel. So I was going to ask you guys what you thought of that teaser. I really like that. I am really excited. I believe this is the first time we're seeing like an actual X-Men uh, no, we if saw in, uh, uh, Doctor Strange 2. Doctor Strange had him, yeah. Doctor Xavier was in Doctor Strange 2. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh. He gets his head imploded. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. correct. Yeah. Spoiler about the wrong film. I don't know how I, I forgot about that. 
Yeah. But yeah, I was still excited to see Beast yeah. in the post credit scene. And they got the cheapest, uh, probably, <laughs> low-profile <laughs> actor, yeah. Kelsey Grammer, for that, I guess. Yeah, I thought, it, I mean, it worked. I mean, it just also reminds you, like, okay, like, Marvel's, like, we're holding our cards back. Just so you guys know, we got a lot of stuff we could do. But we're just being Well, careful, honestly, I, I thought I, that got me excited for to watch that film. I thought that was really well done um, after credit scene. I just think that it just didn't have the impact that they would want it to have just because this film wasn't very popular. So I, I don't know. I remember like when Marvel movies, the seats were all packed or at least like there were a lot of people in there. This and I, I'm glad. I'm glad people are seeing other movies. I'm glad Oppenheimer is making a shit ton of money and not. Oh, me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. But also at the same time, like I wish they would. They had a better marketing for this one because I do think it's it's getting more criticism. Again, to your point, like not that there wasn't anything wrong with it. There are a lot of things that could have been better, but it was still better than a lot of films. Like I do agree that it was better than Thor: Love and Thunder. For sure, but yet that got more audience because it's more of a known character. I think Captain Marvel's personality that is, I don't think the actor's fault, the writers, the way they wrote her, it doesn't excite people to really watch the film. And I think they could have done more promotion to actually add personality to her in a little bit so that it people can be more excited to it, you know? Like, I love the musical aspect of the film oh yeah yeah that was yeah funny. like i really thought that that brought out her personality a little bit more that she's a princess married to the prince and another who like their language is singing um i still think she's the most boring character ever she like, is I, like um yeah. i think she, she they could have from the twilight saga <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i'm sorry but bad, like but, it's yeah. just like she, i don't know I, whenever she's on screen i always feel like she's lacking some like emotion or something like you know that there's not enough like expression it's in her, her character face. too they aren't giving her anything her character, to work with. yeah yeah i don't think it's the actress because i thought like w like the parts when they did give her a little bit more um i still can't substance. see it though it's my, well, uh, my opinion yeah. i thought like i thought she did really well i i think it's almost like thor because like what i criticize about <laughs> thor movies now is that loki really helped thor be who he is and made the movies more entertaining I think that Miss Marvel helped Captain Marvel's character become more entertaining because they balance oh, each other. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I think Captain Marvel needs like a consistent kind of like a character to bounce off yeah, of. Yeah, kind of foiled. Whereas it. like in her other films, she was kind of not given that. Nothing was, she wasn't able to bounce off of anything. And I think it's the way it was written. Well, do you guys have anything else? I'm good. I think that's about it for me. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. And let us know what you think. And we'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>